making a case for personal and collective action to change for good. My advice was they have been posted that government can ensure that they can clear the outstandings that are due to this mission. We wish them all the best. Nominees kill through for their diplomatic license. How we can, you know, address these uh, issues in the North East. Refugees manager grabs another deal for the North East. Plus, politicians move to check out from recession. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Sheung Olagunju. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has implored political leaders in the country to commit themselves to doing things collectively and individually that can alter the ways things are done for good. The Vice President talked about this with members of the House of Representatives Tactical Committee on recession. The story will be brought to you before the end of this bulletin. Now, it has been discovered that a shortfall of over one trillion naira in the 2016 budget projection had affected the implementation of the budget. This revelation came at the public hearing by the Senate Ad Hoc Committee to checkmate anomalies affecting internal revenue generating process by government agencies. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. The shortfall that affected the 2016 budget implementation was due to the alleged misuse on the remittance and other fraudulent activities by government agencies. The Director of Treasury, Federal Minister of Finance, Bakari Badinga, who made the revelation further, implored the committee to strictly examine the reasons behind the shortfall and proper possible solutions. This investigation will enable my department to meet the revenue target. And that is why I am in full cooperation. The president of the Senate, Abubakar Bukolasaraki, represented by Chairman Senate Committee on Finance, John Eno, says the Senate will not condone any attempt by government agencies to undermine the constitutional provision relating to fiscal management and budget implementation. What this clearly means is that total compliance is essential in promoting fiscal discipline, transparency and accountability. I will be taking it in a way to give a report back to the Senate that we at least give a true position of things as affect the internal military revenue of the federal government. All the revenue generating agencies are expected to make presentations at the hearing. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Aminu, NTA News. The National Orientation Agency, NOA, says it will take advantage of the Freedom of Information Act to obtain factual information on government budgets at all levels, monitor implementation and raise objections where necessary. This was at a local government assembly held in Karu, Nasarawa State. Omenka Amarachuku reports. The National Orientation Agency is keeping with its mandates of sensitization, orientation awareness, creation and harnessing communication platform to reach various segments of society with messages on government policies and programs and activities. When you have such a very broad representation, you can be sure that at the end of the day, the message you are taking or you are bringing is not only stopping at the level of the principal recipients, it will be taken out to household levels. Speaking at the event, the ESU Karo commended NOAA for their initiative. Uh, a program, a strategy that brings government to the doorsteps of the local communities. In Abuja, Omenka, Amarachuku, NTA News. Given the high rate of examination malpractice in the West African sub-region, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has challenged educators to set moral and ethical standards to reflect the reality of modern times through the development of curricula that emphasize hard work. He stood this at the opening ceremony of the 65th Annual Council Meeting of the West African Examinations Council in Abuja. Franka Uzoma Olua reports. 
The West African Examinations Council has come of age with the administration of examination within the five member states of the Gambia, Ghana, Liberia, Nigeria, and Sierra Leone. But this is not without the challenges of examination malpractices, which threaten the quality of academic attainment and manpower needs in the sub-region. To Vice President Professor Yemi Osibajo, educators must redefine success to young people to mean hard work, effective planning, and teamwork. We are no longer concerned with the process or means of attaining success. The end, it appears today, justifies the means, which explains why cheating in exams and fake certificates simply do not generate the sort of outrage that such conduct would have generated years ago. The annual council meeting is an opportunity to address the problems facing education and its assessment across the five member nations of WAEC. We are confident that the council will be able to come up with strategies to combat all the problems and challenges that face examination administration across the five members of WAEC. Despite the challenges of insurgency in some parts of the sub-region, the council successfully conducted international examinations in 2016, in which Nigeria had 1.7 million enrollment out of 2.2 million candidates from member states. The council's survival and achievement since inception could not have been possible without the cooperation and support of the governments. The poor performance of candidates in public examinations have remi has remained worrisome. Nigeria's Ayo Deji Oluwafi Sayomi became the second prize winner of the International Excellence Award for the Works for School Candidates in 2016, while Ghana took first and third positions. Franka Uzoma Olua, NTN News. The Senate has confirmed 45 of the 47 non-career ambassadorial nominees presented to it by President Muhammadu Buhari. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zeyanu reports that nominees from two states have been dropped for security reasons and old age. Well, report on the screening of the nominees at the plenary for consideration. The Chairman Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, Mansura Sumonu, said certain requirements were taken into account while assessing the nominees. Namely, appearance, composure, presentation, special skills, issues of diplomacy and general knowledge. At the Committee of the Whole, the Senators confirmed 45 of the nominees after being satisfied with their qualifications, characters and general performance. The nominee from Ondo was rejected on grounds of security report by the DSS, while that of Imo State was rejected on account of old age. Some senators commented on those rejected. He is strong. He visited my office several years. I am surprised that he is being rejected on the basis of age. I've read what is written about the Ondo State nominee number 45 at page 44. And the analysis of his appearance for me, it's, it's, uh, in contra it's, it's contradictory to what the conclusion. Senate President Several. Bukola Saraki called on nominees okay. to be exemplary in their behavior at their various places of postings and reiterated the need for proper funding of Nigerian embassies across the globe. So I think that to be advisable as they are being posted, that government can ensure that they can clear the outstandings that are due to this mission. We wish them all the best and hope they continue to do great service to our country. Raising a point of order, Senate Leader Ahmed Lawal expressed great concern over the spate of terrorist attack on the legislature across the globe, citing the recent Westminster mishap in London as an example. Terrorism is no longer a local issue of any country, but that all terrorist attacks on any one country is attack on all who cherish freedom from oppression and the right to live free. Report of the Senate Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on a bill for an act to amend the Electoral Act was also considered. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NT News. And the House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Aviation to review the Civil Aviation Authority audit report to ascertain that ram safety at the Kaduna Airport complies with aviation safety standards. Members also considered a motion on the need to provide relief materials and medical assistance to internally displaced persons in Konduga, Mapa and Dekwa local government areas of Borno State. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwa reports. Three weeks.
After the diversion of flight operations from the Nnamda Zikwe International Airport, Abuja, to Kaduna Airport, members of the House of Representatives have called for a review of safety provisions at the airport, as moved by Representative Adeyinka Jai. We have issues of the perimeter fencing. Mr. Speaker, we have a lot of livestock movement. The history of uh, cattle sauntering into an aircraft, I mean, in, into a runway, it has not happened, it has only happened in Port Harcourt. The most concern is the potential possibility of the contamination of jet fuel. Mr. Speaker, sir, this experiment is one that must obviously be reviewed. These 15 days of operation in Kaduna Airport successfully without any problem, without any hitches. If we have a committee, and if the issue was brought to the floor of this house, how many people were sent to go and see the readiness of that airport? But I must confess I find um, Hamas logic very tenuous in the sense that it's tantamount to arguing that if a thief steals and escapes with it, then he shouldn't be pursued. The members urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately withdraw and destroy all the faced and mutilated Naira notes in circulation, moved by Representative Alexander Shegun Adekola from Ekiti State. Pension matters came up again on the floor as Representative Todio Kechukwa and six others moved that the federal government should provide bailouts to redeem all federal government pension liabilities. A bill for an act to amend the National Universities Commission to provide for the introduction of parliamentary studies as a cause in tertiary institutions was passed for second reading, sponsored by Representative Prestige O.C. from Abia State. It also gives us the opportunity for us to know what it takes to have a quasha judicial function of the parliament. The House passed for third reading a bill for an act to establish the Federal School of Medical Laboratory Technology, JOS, and that for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Treasury Management from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The National Commission for Refugees will collaborate with US with the USAID group Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. Clear that the Nigerian military has won the war against the Boko Haram insurgents, but the tax of rebuilding devastated areas and rehabilitating the IDPs remain a big challenge. That is why the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons is seeking possible ways of assistance to rebuild affected areas and give the IDPs a sense of belonging. More areas of collaboration, how we can partner, you know, to see how we can, you know, address these uh, issues in the Northeast. On the forceful deportation of Nigerian refugees in Cameroon, the Federal Commissioner expressed concern over the ugly trend in Abuja. Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTN News. Theater commander of Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Lucky Irabo, says the war against insurgency in the Northeast is asymmetric in nature with no defined enemies. He stated this on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria while giving a situation analysis on the matter. Abdul Malik Adiu reports. Urgence in Camp Zero in Sambisa Forest in Bronu State. Theater Commander of Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Loki Rabo says the operation in the Northeast is on course. It's to give assurance to everyone that, that Boko Haram stands defeated. Villages and towns that were liberated, those in the various IDP camps are returning to them. Life is beginning to be returning in greater number to these villages. Group Captain Ayofamu Iwa expressed the need for collective efforts of all stakeholders to weed out the remnant of Boko Haram insurgents. And that's why we have intensified our area patrol activities to make sure that we deny them the opportunity to regroup. The, the attacks that deny fire mostly with uh, suicide bombers is, um, is something that we are working assiduously with other stakeholders to ensuring that um, that menace is brought to an end. They further converse the need for the public to repose confidence in the military operations in the Northeast with factual intelligence for prompt and proactive response to threats. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adieu, NT News. We now join Mohammed Ibrahim in Meiduguri for more reports from Nigeria's Northeast. Over to you, Mohammed. 
Wishing welcome to Network News from Meduguri. Borno State Governor Kashim Shatima has urged all local government chairmen in the state to give unconditional and continued support to the Nigerian Armed Forces and other security operatives for the success of the war on insurgency. He was speaking while presiding over their swearing in ceremony at the government house Meduguri. Muhammad Goni reports. Governor Shatima had while congratulating them charged the new caretaker chairman to exhibit prudence, transparency, and accountability in the management of the scarce resources. As government closes to the people, he enjoined them to deliver the dividends of good governance and democracy, directing them to deploy resources in a manner that will earn them the confidence of the people, and the father directed them to carry along all the critical stakeholders in their areas. He ordered all chairmen to remain in their local government headquarters and warned that any caretaker chairman found sympathetic to the cause of the Boko Haram insurgents is on his own. Within the last six months, we have had cases where one caretaker chairman and a vice chairman were arrested by the military on security related matters. The Boronset government will not only dispose such a person, but will in fact take legal steps towards making such a person and be to call any public office associated with Boronset. Commissioner for Local Government and Emirate Affairs, Usman Zanna, said the appointment of the caretaker chairman was done after wide consultation with relevant stakeholders. In Maidugui, Mamut Goni, NTNU. The education sector in Borno State, which suffered great setback as a result of Boko Haram insurgency, is gradually being restored due to collective efforts of governments, the military, and donor agencies. Ibrahim Uba Yusuf takes a look at the situation. The education sector was the worst hit in the years of Boko Haram insurgency suffered in the Northeast. This is because, as the name Boko Haram implies, not only Western education is forbidden, the group set out to destroy anything Western, hence the devastation in the sector. This, however, is changing following the successes of the military in the counter-insurgency war against Boko Haram and the relative peace that replaced violence in the region. That is the mood in most schools in Meduguri now. The turnout of pupils in schools is now impressive. The parents' uh, appetite for education has been awakened. The pupils are also, their appetite for education has been awakened. And there's also good environmental condition for proper teaching and learning. Most schools are being constructed and the destroyed ones renovated. Alongside this development, the state government has evolved a more sophisticated method of teaching, even at the grassroots. Additional measures taken include enforcement of children enrollment in schools, more especially the girl child. You can see the zeal, the excitement, the determination of both the pupils, the parents, everybody. Schools are being established even in IDP camps, and most donations to the IDPs are mostly towards the development of education and good health. In Meduguri, Ibrahim Obaisu, NT News. That does it from Meduguri. This is back to Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. We told you earlier that Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has implored political leaders in the country to commit themselves to doing things collectively and individually that can alter the ways things are done for good. The Vice President talked about this with members of the House of Representatives Tactical Committee on Recession. State House correspondent Gideon Ifadi now gives us the details. The Ad hoc Committee on Recession was set up by the House of Representatives to consult and interact with all relevant bodies towards quickly exiting the recession. And this time, the nation's head of economic management team, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju, and some members of the team received the committee at the presidential villa. Speaking of the need for political leaders to use their positions to effect changes that would benefit the citizenry, Vice President Oshibatu said leadership was a call to service which must be taken seriously. The Vice President said the federal government remained committed to achieving its objectives on the economy, especially as it affects liquidity issues, including meeting of all its obligations to contractors. Vice President Oshibatu explained that there are policies underway to encourage state governments to increase generation of internal revenue. Corruption, he observed, is another issue that must be fought headlong by all 
including the legislature. The committee, after the meeting which held behind closed doors, were optimistic and confident that the presidency is on the right track towards revamping the economy. We are on the same page. Some of our suggestions have been acknowledged to be what the way they are thinking, and some of our suggestions have been innovative. And by the grace of God, Nigerians will feel the effect of this committee and the effort of the federal government very soon. At the end, we want to arrive in a position where Nigerians are uh, happy with the government because we are all in the government, both the parliament and the executive. The key word from the committee is for Nigerians to be patient for the manifestation of the various steps by government and other stakeholders. We have economic, we have a lot of resources. All we need to do is to wake up. When there are challenges, it leads to innovation. It is when you are hungry, you remember that you have something around the corner of your house that can be turned to food. Nigerians should be patient with government, and by the grace of God, we shall be out of recession. The visit boils down to the fact that all hands must be on deck to get the nation back on its feet. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Just to remind you that you can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. You're watching NTA Network News. Fast track to digitization for a big media. We have details after this break. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office, and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being law abiding students. All right, when the kings of African comedy gather under one roof, there's only one outcome. <laughs> then we bring down the roof. Witness the craziest. <laughs> the what again, sorry? I'm the funniest. No, I'm the funniest. <laughs> the, oh my God! I'm the baddest of them all. Laughter will scatter your brain well, well. <laughs> Come watch the biggest names in African comedy at Glow Laughter Fest. Basket Mouth, Bovi, I Go Die, Shei Law, Gordons, Salvador, Osama, Bash, Kenny Black, and many more. You will never have a bigger gathering of jaw-dropping, head-busting, reef-cracking comedians under one roof. To win a free ticket, use 3,000 Naira in a month and text LOL and your preferred location to 240. Glow Laughter Fest. Laugh go kill you now. The largest data network, Glow Unlimited. <laughs> In line with the Treasury single account policy of the federal government, the Industrial Training Fund notifies all its stakeholders that henceforth all remittances in favor of the ITF are to be processed via our online pay portal. Payments are also to be made against generated invoices from the online pay portal platform at www.payitf.com and can be made online directly from your bank account or at any Nigerian commercial bank. The pay portal allows for real-time electronic payments processing, issuance of electronic invoices and receipts, and electronic certificates of compliance. For further information, email payportal-support at itf.gov.ng or call 081-790-96217 or visit your nearest ITF area office. You can also check the Daily Trust, the Punch, and the Nation newspapers of Tuesday, 14th March 2017. ITF, developing the nation's human resource, announcer management. <laughs> I got this, okay, just... just. Found it. 
money you can keep him. I've got this. Do anything to get your Airtel SIM back on if you haven't used it for 30 days or more to enjoy 20 times the recharge value. Recharge 100 Naira and dial star 241 hash to get 2000 Naira. Press the number check and then there's a girl Airtel, the smartphone oh. network. As part of the ongoing process of repositioning the Bank of Agriculture, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, has approved the appointment of an interim managing director and executive directors for the bank as follows. Kabiru Mohammed, interim managing director, Northwest. Prince A. Akenzwa, executive director, corporate finance, South South. Dr. Okenwa Gabriel, partnerships and strategies, South South. Ame Owoicho E, executive director, credit and empowerment, North Central. Bode Abikwe, executive director, credit and empowerment, South Southwest, Dr. Bukar Hassan, permanent secretary, announcer. Go now! No man here, boy. I register and for computer school. So I go sabi use computer to write UTM exam. The boy can't play football. No, dear, your BT here for nothing. To write UTM exam now. You don't need to submit plenty computer. Just submit damn special eight keys way there on top computer. A, B, C, D for to take answer question. P for preview or back. N for next or forward. Double click S for submit. And arrow for return or reverse. And send or form. Not be six months again, no. Now only one month. From March 20 to April 19. No more scratch card, no. Buy your pin at approved banks and waka go any approved jam CBT center for registration. Meanwhile, optional mock exam there for April. Eight. And the main exam will start from May 6, 2017. You sabi any special Wuduguru center where I put my picket so that even if it fail, it could pass. Yeah. It could. Look, you better tell your picking now to read well, well, oh, because no wuru wuru plus mago mago go jump again, oh, if you don't read well, well, you go fail. This message is by Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM. Enhancing academic excellence. A future assured project and its components get involved. Initiated by the wife of the president, Her Excellency Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is not relenting in championing the cause of Nigerian women and children. Its provision of free medical screening, educational support, and a fight against malnutrition, especially in the Northeast, has indeed informed international recognition partnerships and awards. We are very grateful and appreciative for your wonderful gesture you have afforded to us. With future assured, Nigerian women and children are assured of a bright future. Future is assured when we join hands to promote the health of our women and children. Get involved. Get involved and support the Future Assured Initiative. Future Assured promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Thanks for staying with us on NTA Network News. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, John Odige Oyego, has met with the APC caucus of the House of Representatives, commending the legislators for the cordial relationship between them and the executive. Chief Odige Oyego, who spoke to newsmen after a closed-door session with the members, said the meeting, which deliberated on national issues, was fruitful. We've been very, very supportive of government, of the party, and uh, we had cause to congratulate the right honorable speaker and members for the way uh, so far we have been behind. The meeting lasted over two hours. Still talking politics, the two disputing groups of Senator Alimodu Sharif and that of Senator Ahmed Makarfi of the People's Democratic Party have reached a choice for peace to reign in the party. This followed a meeting of representatives of the two groups convened by the Governor Dixon-led PDP National Reconciliation Committee. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garba Kudu reports. Although the meeting did not give details on the next step to take regarding the suit at the Supreme Court, the two groups agreed to unite and work in the interests of the party. The meeting cautioned members of the two sides against divisive statements. That all actors of the party should desist from making derogatory, inflammatory, and divisive statements against party officials, stakeholders, and members. 
In the meantime, the Reconciliation Committee has submitted its report to the party's Board of Trustees. The report contains proposals on the way forward in the lingering crisis. That the proposed National Convention Committee on eventually set up will have the free hand to conduct its affairs. We welcome the templates which we have submitted, uh, assuring our members that peace will return to PDP and that surely all our differences will be resolved. PDP has been in leadership crisis for over a year now. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunokudu, NTA News. The Supreme Court has fixed the 4th of May to hear arguments concerning the motion for the withdrawal of the appeal by the People's Democratic Party after the judgment of the Court of Appeal in Port Harcourt last month. This is one of the surprising dimensions the PDP crisis took at the Supreme Court today. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okeowu reports. Coming from the Court of Appeal's judgment in Port Harcourt, the aggrieved party filed an appeal at the Supreme Court against that judgment. But at this hearing on Thursday, Prince Latif Fagbemi, who had announced appearance for PDP, and Chief Akinlujimi, both senior advocates of Nigeria, who was for Senator Alimo Sharif and Professor Ladipo, told the court that they were both withdrawing their appeal. Why did they wish to withdraw the appeal? Alimo Sharif has been confirmed as the authentic chairman of PDP. If any action is to be taken, we have to sanction it. We now have to file an application in which we are praying the court to strike out this appeal, which was filed without any authorization by those who could give authority within the PDP. The crux of the matter is that the counsel acting for the appellant, in this case, Senator Ahmed Makarafi's Ketika Committee, also filed the appeal in the name of the PDP. Oh, there is an appeal. You heard me say so. Why do you say we have not been authorized if there is an appeal? We have been authorized. There's, this, this is from a judgment of the Court of Appeal. And on the 4th of May, that is what the Supreme Court will be determining, who has the authority to file appeal before the Supreme Court in the light of the judgment of the Port Court uh, Division of the Court of Appeal. From the Supreme Court, Femi Okeowu, NTA News. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says work will soon continue on the Akure Ikere Adwekiti Highway to ease vehicular movement and that there is re strategizing to refund investments on federal roads by states. He talked it over with Ondo State Governor Rutimi Akeridolu. Doris Olumoko reports. This road has fellow our vehicle and robbers to the attack us on the road because the road is bad. That is the situation on the Akure Ikere Adekiti Road, which the minister said will be addressed soon. As far as the roads are concerned, we seek to do this by connecting states, and that is why we have responsibility for federal highways. On the three years of blackout in the southern senatorial district of Hondo State, the minister explained that efforts are being made to resolve the issue, and those state governor, Mr. Oluwaro Timi Akredolu, appealed for the realization of the Ikele Ishwa Road and Akure Binin Road. It is important for, for the economic I mean, uh, activities, not only from the state, even from Lagos. The governor commended the federal government for its commitment in tackling pressing issues in the country. In Akure, Doris Ulumoko, NT News. Bauchi State Governor Mohamed Abubakar has stressed his resolve to recover funds stolen in the name of contracts not executed. It was while responding to the people of Mia in Ganjua Council area for construction of two roads to aid development. Aba Mekano reports. The governor was in the area based on the invitation by a member representing Ganjua West at the Bauchi State House of Assembly, Al Haji Yusuf Dadi, to witness the distribution of over 20 vehicles to various organizations and individuals. 
the two important roads construction which include 13 kilometer Kadia Road and Zara to Soro Road according to the governor were included in the 2017 budget but maintained that that of Zara to Soro was awarded by the previous administration but the contractor failed to execute the project. He therefore explained that the funds given to the contractor who is a native of the area must be recovered to serve as lesson and assure the resolve of his administration to provide more dividends of democracy to the people of the state. In their separate speeches, Chairman Ganjo Local Government and member representing the area in the State House of Assembly assured their loyalty and support to the MLA administration in the state. In Bauchi, Abbas Mekano, NTA News. Administration has been identified as pivotal for effective and efficient management of human and material resources. This was at a workshop on document security for commanders and administrative personnel of the Nigerian Air Force at the instance of the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, Olajide Bedlu reports. With the theme enhancing document security for effective and efficient service delivery in the Nigerian Air Force, the workshop is to bridge gaps observed in handling of classified documents in line with international best practices. At the end of the workshop, I am confident that the participants will possess the requisite competence to provide solutions and deliver favorable outcomes to administrative issues that had hitherto been a challenge. The objective of the workshop, therefore, is to enhance professionalism by addressing pertinent security issues in handling official documents. Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar noted that the workshop, which is in line with his vision of promoting and inculcating core values of integrity, excellence, and service delivery in Nigerian Air Force personnel, would help in overcoming challenges militating against effective and efficient document security. In Abuja, on large day, Bello, NTA News. A delocalized meeting of the Joint Committee on Political Affairs, Peace, Security and Judicial Affairs of the ECOWAS Parliament has begun in Bamako, Mali for harmonization. Olainka Ucho reports. Since 2012, Mali has been made in overlapping security, political and economic crisis after Mali's government was overthrown in a military coup d'etat. Despite significant increase in international efforts since 2013, the country remains volatile. Interacting on the Malian peace process, progress, security challenges and prospects for sustainable peace, the member states during the meeting advocate true dialogue, reconstruction, reintegration and implementation of the peace and reconciliation agreement from the Algiers process. To achieve genuine peace, the government of this great country, Mali, must take the lead. The government must not feel too big. It's all a farm is seeking force. Women need to be central to any resolution of this crisis because it only is normal. And we are the very ones who are losing our husbands, we are losing our children in this whole. Retreating that justice and protection of human rights is important in the peace process in Mali, Chairman Committee on Political Affairs Peace and Security, Equas Parliament, Yaya Sangari noted that Malians must be willing to embrace peace. Il faut que tous les Maliens puissent se parler. We Malians we need to realize that it is we who should be in the lead in this process. We should lead the process of reconciliation. The peace process that they are trying to build now is the one that is going to give them a lasting peace. Members used the interactive session to commend the United Nations and stress the need for the establishment of a second chamber of assembly in Mali. A national conference and inclusiveness in governance. In Bamako, Mali, online Kaoju, NTA News. And back home, two suspects linked to the River State Legislative rerun elections violence in February this year have been paraded by the police. First Public Relations Officer CSP Jimo Moshud reiterated the determination to rid the society of miscreants while maintaining peace and order. Chimdima Ndubisi reports. The first public relations officer stated that the two suspects were arrested with an Akura jeep carrying 
two AK-47 rifles, 24 rounds of live ammunition, three magazines, and two expanded ammunition shells. After ballot boxes were snatched at polling units during the river stage we run election. Including identification cards and tags belonging to a political party. There are three other suspects at large. Our investigation is ongoing uh, into this act and they will soon be added in court uh, in compliance with the Electoral Act. Also paraded were two suspected staff of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps apprehended with a patrol van full of suspected illegally refined petroleum products by the Special Tax Force on Petroleum and Illegal Bunkering in Bayasa State. The Inspector General's Special Tax Force in Nasara, Delta and Ogun states also recovered nine trailer trucks loaded with 33,000 liters of adulterated petroleum products. The drivers were said to have absconded on site in the team. In Abuja, Chimdima Ndubisi, NTA News. As the nation inches towards June Digital Switchover Date, Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed has taken one more step towards the transmission of clean signals from all NTA stations. This is with the presentation of digital studio equipment to three zonal centers. Edino Justice brings us details. In Canara, state of the art. The benefiting the zonal centers are Lagos, Enugu, and Kaduna. Wait, NTA Lafia as the only state station. The Director General, who emphasized the vital role of studio equipment in digital broadcasting, said NTA is determined to fast track the process. He urged the beneficiaries to protect and make good use of them, while more will be delivered to other centers. This is just the beginning, and uh, we keep going until we, we ensure that every production center in NTA is fully digitized. I've always believed that the problems of NTA have nothing to do with uh, personnel. You know, we have some of the best hands in television in Africa. Uh, what has always been our bane has been, you know, the, the issue of obsolete equipment. So NTA cannot be left behind. Uh, it is expected that when, this come, when these uh, equipments are install the difference will be clear there was excitement on these development it's going to affect even the morale of the staff having new brand new facilities well, I'm, I'm excited excited to be part of the the change is this that change in the nta as the three zona directors take delivery of these studio equipment one thing they are sure they are viewing public is clean signal come june this year edina justice NTA News. Beside the media playing the role of watchdog of the society and barometer for information dissemination and education, the current media action has dovetailed into providing intellectual leadership to government, the private sector and the public at large. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, and publisher 2017 Nigeria Outlook, Reginald Wadiego, Sit at this on NCA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought. We find that the problems at development can be reduced to essentially problems of communication. If you're able to get your communications right, you are able to solve your problems of uh, development. But if you look at it more intensely, we don't really have a serious economic problem. We have a problem of uh, lack of effective communications of, of our opportunities. Moment for Thought comes up tonight at 10.30 on the network service of the NTA. Time now to join Viera Chimuba in Lagos for more stories. Hello, Viera. Good to see you. Thank you, Sharon. Good to see you back and welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State High Court sitting at Ibosharing has commenced, has sentenced two men Okumo Wabufu and Ulise Luka Ezike to death by hanging for killing Cynthia Osokogo, a postgraduate student of Nasrao State University. Justice Alabusi Akilade delivered the judgment today in Lagos. Delivered the judgment. Cynthia Okusogo, a postgraduate student of Nasrao State University and fashion designer, was allegedly murdered by her Facebook friends, Okumo Wabufu and Ulise Eka Ezike, in July 2012 at Cosmilla Hotel, Lakeview Estate in Festac, Lagos. 
She was lured to Lagos from Abuja on false business proposal. On getting to Lagos, she was drugged and abused while various photographs of the abuses, in addition to film and recorded video, were captured in the laptop and burnt into CD by her captives. The two convicts were on February 8 arraigned alongside AGK Osita and Ezekiel also on a five count charge of conspiracy to murder, murder, felony, selling, and recklessness and negligence act. In a well articulated and considered judgment, which lasted for nearly five hours, Justice Olabusi Akilade of Lagos High Court held that after carefully analyzing the evidence adduced before the court, testimonies of prosecution witnesses and confessional statements, she has no doubt that the prosecution has proved its case beyond reasonable doubt, that the accused were guilty of killing Okusobu. She also found them guilty of second charge of committing felony by stealing her Blackberry phone, which proved that the accused intended and in fact took the life of the deceased in the process of stealing her phone. Justice Akila de found the accused guilty of conspiracy to murder and stealing. Osita Oji, the pharmacist who sold the drugs used in drug in the deceased, was however discharged and acquitted of the charge of recklessness and negligence for selling drugs without proper prescription. Once a court passes a judgment, it has force of law, it is binding. The decision of the court to uphold that principle of law that demands proof beyond reasonable doubt is one that should be emulated. And if you're just joining us, you're still watching NTA Network News, reaching you live from the Lagos Network Center. We have more reports ahead of the news when we return from Abuja. After this time out, stay with us. Hello? Welcome to the M6 Challenge. Using your new Geoni M6, carry out everything on that list. Starting now. Gioni M6 with a 5,000 milliamp battery that lets you go on for two days on a single charge. Gioni M6, always in power. It's finally here. The most anticipated sports show on live television. Featuring great sports icons from ex-internationals to famed journalists and administrators. It doesn't come bigger than the sports parliament, which premieres live on the NTN network this Thursday from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. Be a part of the biggest sports talk show on television to help chart a successful path for Nigerian sports. 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday on the NTA. Sports Parliament, where the eggheads converge. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Welcome back. And on to business news now. On the front burnout once again, bank customers frown over prevailing 65 Naira charges levied on them when they initiate ATM transactions outside their domicile in bank. Here is Chazalam Ikie with this and more on Business News. Good evening and a warm welcome to Business News. Most bank customers are worried that with the numerous charges imposed on them, measures should be in place to check the 65 Naira charges for the transactions as one of those arbitrary charges. Just for you to use an ATM from other bank to another bank, they de de deducted 65 Naira with no apology. But the Deputy Director, Banking and Payment System Department, CBN, Musa Jimo, thinks otherwise. 
The first three that you do at Total Bank's ATM is free. You're not going to pay. On the fourth one, I'm, I, I'm basically referring to transactions at other banks' ATM, not your own. If it's at your bank ATM, you can do as many transactions in there. From the fourth one, you pay the 65 naira. The Central Bank of Nigeria on September 1st, 2014, reintroduced charges for ATM transactions, citing frivolous withdrawals and abuse by users. Meanwhile, Nigeria's debt office says it raised 2.07 billion naira from a new two-year savings bond intended for retail investors. The match auction attracted subscription from over 2,500 applicants during the five-day sale. And just before we go, a quick check on how the equities market fared today. That's the package at this time. I am Chia Zalamek here. The news continues. Please stay with us. About 50,000 jobs have been created in Nigeria following the signing of Memorandum of Understanding on the Supply of Phosphate between Nigeria and Morocco. Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Dr. Mikanti Baru, said this while receiving the National Coordinator of the New Partnership for African Development, NEPAD, in Nigeria, Gloria Akobundu. The NNPC boss emphasized that the supply of phosphate is to rejuvenate agriculture by making fertilizer available. The Moroccans already have supplied uh, a cargo of phosphate which has uh, been delivered to various uh, blending plants and uh, 11 blending plants have come into production now to because of the supply of the prospect. NEPAD also collaborates with NEPAD Continental Office, uh, that's NEPAD Coordinating and Planning in South Africa. And most of our program is AU program and EU. We collaborate and they most time give us the directive, like the goals and the aim objective of the AU to implement in our various countries. The visit is to strengthen regional cooperation towards the success of projects, including the Trans-Saharan Gas Pipeline. We have one more break for more messages. Stay with us. Approval of the whistleblower's policy by the Federal Executive Council and its launch by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, patriotic Nigerians have been making inquiries on how and where they could deliver information that could lead to the stopping or uncovering of fraud to the appropriate authority and answers to frequently asked questions. The Federal Minister of Finance has therefore dedicated a telephone line for receiving SMS, a whistleblower's portal, and an email address through which members of the public who volunteer to disclose information about a possible misconduct or violation could deliver such information for the attention of the team dedicated to process such information. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC impacts upon everything we do, including water we drink, the food we eat. They are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefits and success that they need to record. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. On the foreign scene, more than 200 migrants fared dead in the Mediterranean as bodies are recovered from the sea. More on global tidbits. Let's join Talatu Isirike. 
game changer for sub-Saharan Africa as health workers in the region hailed the potentiality of a new vaccine to fight rotavirus that could save hundreds of thousands of lives, mostly children. Researchers said the outcome of the clinical results in places like Niger has shown more than 60 percent efficacy and the vaccine needs no refrigeration. Also, UK's Prime Minister Theresa May at the Parliament said that the London Taro Ataka was British-born, who had previously been investigated, as she assured of tight security and mass evacuation after a series of explosions at an arms depot in eastern Ukraine, described by officials as sabotage. That is all on Global Tidbits. Talati Zeriki, NTA News. Time now for Sports Update. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Football Club of Lagos got to the top of Nigeria Professional Football League table with 27 points, following their 2-1 victory over Rivers United in the rescheduled Week 8 match at the Agege Township Stadium midweek. Plateau United dropped to second place on 25 points. Eight goals, one away win, and two draws were recorded in the Nigeria National League Match Day 2 Southern Conference fixtures. Delta Force picked three maximum points on the road against Sikorodu United after a 1 0 victory. Team Chika Chiku Merije Sports Foundation won. Kamati says the agency will improve on its forecast for the safety of all. Mariam Emekamadi completes the report. In a cloudless sky during the day or night, humanity will be inflicted with many heat related diseases, direct exposure to ultraviolet radiation and extreme cold. That is the focal point of World Mythological Day, which Nigeria is commemorating among other 191 mythological organizations, WMO, on 23rd March every year. The theme for this year's celebration is understanding the clouds, which highlights the importance of clouds for weather, climate, and water. Celebration for this year is particularly relevant to us as a country in two front one as members of WMO Nigeria as a member of WMO we are celebrating another milestone in the historical achievement of the organization in the Asia. the director general said NIMET through the observation of clouds predicted delay in the commencement of rainfall and lengthy dry spell which will affect crop production in the country so the implications of this are quite obvious it means since we are relying heavily on rain in order to cultivate crops, the behavior of the rain might not be to the expectation of the farmers. Miriam Emekamadi, NTA News. And before we go, a quick reminder that you can watch all our stories and much more when you log on to our website, www.nta.ng. And that's the network news for tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Shion Olagunju. Good night. Oh, my God.